Hello and welcome. My name is Miss Melissa and I am a teaching artist. Today we are going to learn how to create a water tower drawing. This video is part of the Acadiana Center for the Arts online series, Visual Arts Studio, where teaching artists present lessons in visual art, dance, music, and more. And you can enjoy them from anywhere. Here are the supplies that you are going to need for today. First, you will need to get a couple of pencils and an eraser. Also, you will need a ruler because we're going to be drawing a lot of straight lines today. Before we start drawing, I would like to share some fun facts with you about water towers. And as you can see here, there are several types. Have you ever noticed the water towers in our community? Most people see these structures every day, but never really think about what they are or how they serve their community. Have you ever wondered why water towers exist? What do you think is inside of it? And why does it have to be a tower? And how does it even work? Did you guess these tall structures actually hold water? Well then, you were right. Water towers are full of water. Our water system is very reliable and water towers play an important role. When you turn on your water faucet at home, the water comes out because the water is under pressure. This pressure is somewhere between 50 to 100 PSI, which means pounds per square inch. As you can see here, this is a picture of Lafayette Utility System's water tower. Have you ever wondered why water towers are so high in the sky? Well, as you can see in this picture, the top of the tower actually looks very close to the clouds in the sky. Water towers are tall and often placed on high ground. That way they can provide enough pressure to deliver water to homes. Experts can use mathematical formulas to determine how tall a water tower needs to be. In flat areas like here in Lafayette, taller structures may even be necessary. Clean treated water is pumped into a tower where it is stored in a large tank. Here is another picture of a water tower here in Lafayette and you could actually see the large tank where the water is stored. The tank might actually hold a million or so gallons, enough water to run the whole town of Lafayette for a day. Let's take a look at some examples of some really cool, unique towers that are located across the country of the United States. The Lafayette Utility Systems Water Tower, located in Lafayette, Louisiana, um, I showed you that picture already, and the Raging Cajuns. Those two towers can be seen here, which is where we live. I'm gonna also show you some really cool towers located in South Carolina, Illinois, Minnesota, and Hawaii. Now here you can see a giant bottle of ketchup, but it's actually a giant water tower designed in a ketchup bottle. Isn't that neat? And you could actually see how high it is and even the rails for workers to walk around. This really unique water tower is located in Collinsville, Illinois. Here is another unique water tower that looks like a teapot. This particular water tower is located in Lindstrom, Minnesota. Did you know that there are several water towers throughout the country that are designed as fruit? This pineapple water tower is located in Honolulu, Hawaii. And the last really cool water tower I'm gonna show you today 
is located in Daphne, South Carolina, and it's a giant peach. You can find other really neat water towers throughout the country, and many of these towers that have really cool designs have a lot of history behind the images. Now we will begin drawing a water tower, so go ahead and get your supplies handy. Oh, and I forgot to tell you earlier that you will need a white paper. While we draw our water tower, we will be using a type of drawing called perspective drawing. Perspective is the art of drawing solid objects on a two-dimensional surface while giving the right impression of height, width, and position in relation to each other. Our paper is two-dimensional, so it's flat. We are going to be using a ruler to help us achieve straight lines in our perspective drawing. Let's look at the parts of the water tower that we are going to draw today. We're going to draw the tank, the railing, the beams, and as you can see they're all different sizes. The one in the center is the largest. The two on the sides are the next largest. Then the two in the middle come next as far as width and then the ones in the back, technically they're the same size as the two center beams, but in a perspective drawing from far away, they look like they're smaller. We're also going to draw the ladder and the cables, just the basic components. The towers that we saw were actually part of landscape, so let's go ahead and draw maybe like a straight line, but it could have a few bumps in it because that's going to be the ground, right? And if you're looking at a landscape you see trees in the background. A lot of times those trees have the outline of a bunch of wavy lines. So let's just go ahead and draw some random wavy lines that could resemble the tops of trees. Alright, and now we're going to start with our tower. I'm going to draw it off center a little bit and let's just kind of guess. We're going to be doing some guesswork today and some measuring, but lots of drawing with a ruler. This is going to be the top of the tank and I'm going to guess at about maybe this could be the bottom. All right, and we're going to put a dot for where we think the center is. We're going to make the tank an inch and a half on both sides. Okay. I'm going to make two straight lines and you're just copying off of me. Now let's go ahead and bring this down a little bit. And we're going to go straight across but make a slight curve. to show the railing. And I'm going to make a slight curve on top here, kind of going down. The tank to me is the hardest part to draw. But once we can once we get that, we can um start with the beams and I'll be erasing as I go. There we go. If you ever look um, closely at one of these railings they have like this balcony and this is what I'm drawing now. It's basically a bunch of cables that run across. But this is what we would see from far away. And I'm going to make two straight lines going above and below this railing. Now we want to make a, a several curvy lines, I guess you could say, and make this sort of look like 
it's like in between an oval and a circle. It's not the easiest shape to draw. So I'm just going to sketch it until I feel like I have it. And then I can go back and kind of clean it up, which means erase. This is the part that we are eyeballing. All right, so you're just going to keep playing around with these curvy lines until you get it, until it looks right to you. And remember those um, the different towers that I showed you had several designs. So it doesn't have to be perfect. You could actually come up with your own design. So I don't want to spend too much time on this because I'm, I can show you how to do the rest of the tower with the beams and the cables which will help us achieve perspective. Okay, I think that's good enough. Now feel free to stop the video and pause it at any time if you feel the need. So now I'm going to move on to the beam. So I'm going to put my pencil in the center on the bottom of the tank. And then I'm going to make two thick lines next to it and bring it straight down with my ruler. Okay, so now that we've achieved this, we're going to draw this, I guess you could say this angle, a straight line that comes down, and then we can erase the center. This is going to be the supporting structure of the, the center beam. A lot of times when you erase, you might have to go ahead and put it back. But that's the good thing about drawing in pencil. All right, now we're going to draw our two side beams right along the edge underneath that railing, and it's going to come out at an angle. We're going to do one on each side. Again, we're sort of guessing here. The beams on both sides. That looks pretty good. We're going to bring it in, but we're not going to make it as thick as the center beam, but it'll be, you know, pretty close. Again, we want our lines to be parallel. I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. There we go. All right, so now we're going to draw our two center beams in the front, which also stem from this railing. So I'm going to put a dot where I think the middle would be, maybe here, because they're also going to be at a slight slant, and maybe here. Let's try it and see. All right, let's go ahead and make a straight line parallel to the one we made on the left, from the ground all the way to the railing. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Remember, you want to keep these lines parallel. Now keep in mind, these two center beams that we're drawing are going to be a little bit thinner than the ones that we drew on the outside. Let's see how it comes out. Again, don't forget to pause the video if you need to. Those look pretty even. We also want to erase the tank, the bottom curve of the tank, because the center beams cross over. And then we're going to draw these lines back on top. All right. Now you might have to go back and erase the tree line from your bars. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. If you had to erase all of your beams, then you probably already um, have those tree lines erased. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust and draw a little darker on top of the beams. And you can use a ruler too. Okay. Okay, now we can draw the two beams in the background, which will appear the what? Biggest or smallest? You guessed it. It will appear the smallest. So, let's go ahead and draw where we think the center of it is. And I'm going to draw two lines on each side, parallel to these lines. And I'm just going to put them very close together. The good thing about a clear ruler is I can see through it. <clears throat> so just take your time. Keep in mind, if you need to pause the video, that is perfectly fine. Because of the details of this drawing, you'll probably have to pause it, but that's okay. I'm hoping that you do pause it so you can feel caught up. Okay, now we have all the beams. I'm going to go and erase these tree lines real quick. and then put them back on. We have the tank, the beams that are very similar in width to the opposite beams on both sides. We have the railing. Let's go ahead and draw the ladder now. This is just for the uh, workers to climb up to the top of the railing. Now it's going to connect right close to the edge of that railing and it's going to be parallel to the line we just drew. And it's going to be very tiny so you can just draw some straight lines kind of freely. From far away they're just going to look like a bunch of straight lines even though we know there is actually a surface. So you can do this and go all the way up, which takes a little bit of time. And you know, the good thing about this is once you get the gist of this basic, simple tower design, you can design your own. Let's go ahead and make our horizontal beams. And I want we're going to make two sections. I'm just going to guess. Make two lines that will give you that equal distance. Basically, we're going to have straight lines that run across and they are going to slightly curve as we go out. Watch what I'm doing. You see how I'm slightly curving my ruler? So we're going to do that in between each vertical beam. And I'm kind of going pretty quickly, so they're not going to be perfect, but I want to give you an idea. A slight curve. You see that? In between each beam, I start straight and then I'm doing a slight curve. We're going to do the same thing on the bottom. This time I think to make it go a little bit easier, I am going to draw a straight line going right across the main beam and I'm going to do the same thing on top. And I think this will help. And that looks 
pretty even to that one. Now I'm going to give it a slight turn. We want these to be parallel and I'm going to try to keep these parallel as well from the bottom to the top. Do the same thing here. Slightly turn your ruler. Keep your lines parallel within your spaces. I'm going to slightly curve my ruler and I'm going to curve it a little more and I want these to be parallel because they're in the same space. All right, now we do the same thing on top. So it looks like it's wrapping around. I'm going to leave a good bit of space. Remember, we're going to cheat a little, go straight across. I'm going to slightly curve my ruler and we want to keep the top and bottom lines parallel. Do you see that? We're creating an illusion. An illusion that these beams are actually going around in a circle. All right, let's go ahead and do the bottom horizontal beams. And remember I said we'll do a good bit of guesswork today. It's whatever you think looks good. That looks pretty even. I'm going to go straight across and kind of cheat here. And then I'm going to slightly curve it out. Keep these lines parallel. And I'm even going to curve this a little more. I'm going to do the same thing here. This ruler is a wonderful tool. I don't know if I could have completed this project without it. You want to keep these lines parallel to each other. Now, do you remember how I was saying we were going to cheat and draw the lines going straight across? Well, actually, some of them do need to go across because remember, this horizontal beam is wrapping around. I'm going to pick my top bar to go across where the bottom's going to come underneath. You see? This top bar is going to be in the front where the bottom's going to be in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and erase it and show you what it looks like. Take a look at this curvy line compared to this one. Do you notice how this top bar runs across? Which means that I had to erase all of my vertical lines that intersected it. And the bottom bar was the opposite. I erased all of the curvy or horizontal lines that intersected the vertical. So I drew the vertical back on top. You're going to do this for these horizontal beams on the top and the bottom. I didn't do it on the bottom yet, you see? Now I'm going to do it on the bottom and you'll see the difference. All right, now you could see how I went ahead and adjusted my picture. Now you could see that the top bars are going across these vertical bars. So I had to erase all of my vertical lines within the top um, horizontal beams, okay? Now look at the bottom beams. Notice that all the vertical beams go straight through. Do you see that? So you're also going to have to erase on the bottom here as well.
All right, now keep in mind, go ahead and pause if you need to. I actually stopped for a second so you could see the difference. So now what's left are the cables that help support this structure. I'm just going to make an X in these three sections and it's going to go on top. Okay. Now there are a lot more cables than what I'm going to draw, but you'll get the right idea. It will still, it'll look more like a water tower. That's, we're adding the last step. And keep in mind, these cables are very thick, just from far away. They look like a straight line. I'm going to go ahead and draw these X's, which represent cables on the outside areas. Or should I say the outside spaces of this tower. Alright, and now I'm going to draw some going across here. And we want to go from one corner to the other. The ruler is very helpful here. And the last step would be maybe to add, I don't know, a couple of clouds, which would be more wavy lines. Because remember, these towers are so tall, that you could they're pretty much in line with the clouds in the sky. And you know, you might have a different way of drawing clouds. Something like that. <laughs> have fun with it. So now you have a landscape. You could even, you could paint this uh, in watercolor. If you have a thick drawing paper, um, you can color it with markers. You can color it with pencil color. You can even leave it in um, pencil. You can trace it in an extra fine tip permanent marker. That would look really nice. Well, I think you did a wonderful job with all of these steps in making your perspective drawing of a water tower. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Well, thank you for creating art with us today. Be sure to come back next week for a new virtual art studio lesson.